there, you're back with Barry. And a while ago, I was searching on the web for kind of my next book of interest now that I've caught up with the little minor changes we needed to do over the couple of weeks. And um, it was interesting because I ran into an autobiography from a former KGB propagandist, and it grabbed my attention. This gentleman's name, uh, he was actually the highest ranking Soviet. A block intelligence officer ever to defect to West to the West, and his name was uh, Lieutenant General Ion Nikai Pasepa, if I'm pronouncing it right. Uh, his field of expertise was destabilization of nations from within, and um, while allowing actually the citizenry to do it for for them without them even know it's going on it's going on in other words right under the citizens noses that they're actually participating in it unknowingly doing it for the people that want to do it and um kind of exactly what's happening today anyway you can't research this topic without the name of yuri bezmenov coming up. And I first brought that name. Now, of course, on the fly-by-night people on the web, now all of a sudden his name's popular again. But we we brought his name first out, oh, about 15, 15 years ago. And uh, we brought out a clip then too, and we weren't the only ones, but he did an interview, uh, a clip back in uh, 1984. And uh, he's talking about certain things back in that clip. And we're going to watch it together. I just took the short segment of it because that was the only... You can watch the entire interview on your own. I just uh, wanted this short section about the subject uh, that they're talking about is what is meant by ideological subversion. And it's, um, it's a divide and conquer uh, for sure. But uh, quoting Bezmenov on how he phrased it. Now, this is back in 1984, and he's claiming that it was being used against the American people because it was Soviet, uh, it was Soviet uh, intelligence, and they were actually training the West on how to use it effectively. So ideological subversion, I want to read his definition. I'm quoting him from 1984. What it basically means is, change the perception of reality of every American to such an extent that despite the abundance of information, no one is able to come to sensible conclusions in the interest of defending themselves, their families, their community, and their country. Now, um, the, he basically describes on how this is a long-term plan. It's systematic, and it's in four basic elements, four major sections of it. I'm going to let you look that up if you want on your time, okay? But I do want to fast forward uh, to, the, to, to one of the stages there, and uh, like I say, look up the rest on your own. But this is what this segment is basically pigeonholing. It's dovetailing into this area. Quoting Bezmanov, as I mentioned before, exposure to true information does not matter anymore, said Bezmanov. A person who was demoralized is unable to assess true information. The facts tell nothing to him. Even if I shower him with information, with authentic proof, with documents, with pictures, even if I take him by force to the Soviet Union and show him a concentration camp, he will refuse to believe it until he receives a kick in his fat bottom. When a military boot crashes his balls, then he will understand, but not before that. That's the tragedy of the situation of demoralization. Now, this is key. Key, Bezmanov goes in to actually using the term leftists. We are done with the leftists that we are using to confuse when they are no longer needed. 
they will be cast aside and kicked with the same boot. He uses the term leftist. He applies it towards the democratic side, which is exactly what you're saying now. Exactly. I'm not taking sides. Remember, I don't vote. I'm Canadian. All I'm saying is step back, unbiasedly, separate for clarity, separate, distance yourself from any personal attachment. The man uses the term leftist in 1984, and he clearly states once they're done using them, they will be crushed by the same boot. How many times in history have we seen Romans, the Hebrews, the Greeks, I, we can go on and on, the Phoenicians, we can go on and on, the Zadokites. Again, nothing changes but the technology. So when I'm asked if I could pick one single video that I would want to put on a memory stick and make sure my children see it and my grandchildren see it, I think out of all the tens of thousands I've seen, heck, thousands I've done myself, I'd have to say if there was one I could choose, it would have to be that one. Because it identically to the letter, what you are seeing unfolding in front of our eyes, regardless of what side you're on now. So watch this, and uh, I'll briefly pick it up on the other side. Just a key piece of information. Do yourself a favor and put it on a memory stick. And anybody who says, oh, I've already seen that, already totally missed the whole point. Okay, we'll pick this up on the other side. Mr. Besmianov was born in 1939 in a suburb of Moscow. He was the son of a high-ranking Soviet Army officer. He was educated in the elite schools inside the Soviet Union and became an expert in Indian culture and Indian languages. He had an outstanding career with Novosti, which was the, and still is, I should say, the press arm or the press agency of the Soviet Union. It turns out that this is also a front for the KGB. He escaped to the West in 1970 after becoming totally disgusted with the Soviet system, and he did this at great risk to his life. He certainly is one of the world's outstanding experts on the subject of Soviet propaganda and disinformation and active measures. Well, you spoke several times before about ideological subversion. That is a phrase that uh, I'm afraid some Americans don't fully understand. When uh, the Soviets use the phrase ideological subversion, what do they mean by it? Ideological subversion is, is the slow process which we call either ideological subversion or active measures, activne meropriyatia in the language of, of the KGB, or psychological warfare. What it basically means is to change the perception of reality of every American to such an extent that despite of the abundance of information, no one is able to come to sensible conclusions in the interest of defending themselves, their families, their community, and their country. It's a great brainwashing uh, process which goes very slow and it's divided in, in four basic stages. Uh, the first one being demoralization. It takes from 15 to 20 years to demoralize a nation. Why that many years? because this is the minimum number of years which requires to uh, educate one generation of students in the country of, of, of your enemy, exposed to the ideology of the enemy. In other words, Marxism-Leninism ideology is being pumped into the soft heads of, of, of at least three generations of American students without being challenged or counterbalanced by the basic values of Americanism, American patriotism. The demoralization process in the United States is basically completed already uh, for the last 25 years. Actually, it's overfulfilled because uh, demoralization now reaches such areas where previously not even Comrade Andropov and, and all his experts would, would even dream of such a tremendous success. Most of it is done by Americans to Americans, thanks to lack of moral standards. As I mentioned before, uh, exposure to true information does not matter anymore. A person who was demoralized is unable to assess true information. The facts tell nothing to him. 
uh, even if I shower him with information, with, with authentic proof, with documents, with pictures, even if I take him by force to the Soviet Union and show him concentration camp, he will refuse to believe it until he, he is going to receive a kick in, the, in his fat bottom. When a military boot crashes his balls, then he will understand, but not before that. That's the tragic of the situation of demoralization. The next stage is destabilization. This time, subverter does not care about your ideas and the patterns of your consumption. Whether you eat junk food and get fat and flab, it doesn't matter anymore. This time, and it takes only from two to five years to destabilize a nation, uh, it's, what, what matters is essentials, economy, foreign relations, defense systems. Uh, and you can see it quite clearly that in some areas, uh, in such sensitive areas as, as uh, defense, an economy, uh, the uh, influence of Marxist-Leninist ideas in the United States is absolutely fantastic. I, I could never believe it 14 years ago when I landed uh, in this part of the world that the process will go that fast. Uh, the next stage, of course, is crisis. It, it, it may take only up to six weeks to, to bring a country to the verge of crisis. You can see it in, in Central America now. And after crisis, with a violent change of, of power, structure, and economy, you have so-called the period of normalization. It may last indefinitely. Normalization is a cynical expression borrowed from Soviet propaganda. When the Soviet tanks moved into Czechoslovakia in 68, Comrade Brezhnev said, now the situation in brotherly Czechoslovakia is normalized. This is what will happen in the United States if you allow all these schmucks to bring the country to crisis to promise people all kind of goodies and the paradise on earth, uh, to, to destabilize your uh, economy, to eliminate the principle of free market competition, and to put a big brother government in Washington, D.C., with the benevolent dictators like Walter Mondale, who will promise lots of things, never mind whether the promises are fulfillable or not. Your leftists in, in the United States, all these professors and all these beautiful civil rights defender they are instrumental in the process of the of the uh, uh, subversion only to destabilize the nation when their job is completed they are not they are not needed anymore they know too much some of them when when they get disillusioned when they see that marxist lenin has come to power the, obviously they get offended they think that they will come to power that will never happen of course they will be lined up against the wall and shot but they may turn into the most bitter enemies of Marxist-Leninists when they come to power. And that's what happened in Nicaragua. You remember most of these uh, former Marxist-Leninists were either put to prison or one of them split and now he's working against Sandinistas. It happened in, in uh, uh, Grenada when Maurice Bishop was, he was already a Marxist. He was executed by, by a new Marxist who was more Marxist than this Marxist. Same happened in Afghanistan when uh, first there was Taraki, he was killed by Amin, then Amin was killed by Babrak Karman with the help of KGB. Same happened in, in Bangladesh when Mujibur Rahman, very pro-Soviet leftist, was assassinated by his own Marxist-Leninist military comrades. It's the same pattern everywhere. The, the time bomb is ticking with every second. Well guys, you're back here and uh, wow, that must be about the sixth time I've seen that little cut. but. If I had one to pick, that would be it. I want to recap it with you really quick here, okay? Um, within the first minute, the narrator mentions the word propaganda. On either side, it's all propaganda, okay? So get out of the trap of Democrat, Republican, or Russia's bad, America's great, or China's terrible, and India's... One Get that out of your mind. It's all propaganda from all sides. Psychological warfare at the 1 minute 17 second mark. Change the perception of reality. It's a great brainwashing process. But it goes very slow. At the 142 mark, he mentions that. Demoralization. It takes 15 to 20 years. He mentions at the 153 mark. Because that's the time it takes to educate one complete generation and actually 
indoctrinate into the public school system what they want to teach you, okay, what they want in your mind. Okay? Demoralization has taken on such a tremendous success, far exceeding their wildest hopes. That came out at the 2 minute 43 second mark. At the 3 minute mark, re-listen to what the KGB's definition of what true demoralization is. Now tell me if that's not exactly what we're witnessing right now all across the West and all across Europe too. Stage two, destabilization. This takes about two to five years. They destabilize the economy, foreign relations, defense systems. Have a look at what's going on. Never have the foreign relations been at a lower state between Russia, China, India, on and on, all through the Middle East. Don't have to go there with you. Take a look at the fighting all over the Middle East, okay? The economy, everybody's economy is in ruins. That's one of the biggest catalysts behind this whole thing is the simple fact that the economy never did recover from 08, and they simply can't kick it down the can down the road any longer. People aren't buying the debt anymore. It's coming home to roost. That's all it is, simplistically put. They're using the virus as the means to, how do you blame the government? On an act of God, on a disease. Okay. Stage three, crisis. Pay close attention here. It takes about six weeks. So what stage would you kind of estimate in this greater plan that hasn't changed since 1984? Would you call stage three? You see, it's the lockdown that we're facing right now. And we're going to quite possibly go back to it towards the fall. Again, all by just scaring an ignorant populace. So um, it takes about six weeks to bring a country to crisis. That's exactly what we're seeing. As you see, the just as we said would happen, the riots are now approaching in the upper hundred thousands over in Europe. They're getting much larger in America. People are now being hit by vehicles, by trucks, and it's just gone. It's beginning to show the effects of what happens, okay, when your populace, when your citizenry, is de when your nation has been moralized. There's no other way to say it. Finally, you have the fourth and final stage, normalization. Now, I ask you, do you think it's a coincidence that everybody bringing on the new phrase about it will never return, there'll be a new normal? But normal's never coming back. There will be a new normal. Normalization, final stage. Do you think there's any coincidence that this, this lines up perfectly? From what is that, 30... 34 years later, that it lines up perfectly? Only the ignorant would believe it. Demoralization, it is a uh, Soviet propaganda statement. Just re-listen to it in the, uh, into uh, Yuri's ex explanation, and it lasts indefinitely. That means it can be overturned. Understand that. Nothing's permanent. And if nothing's done, it will perpetuate forever. It will be like grandfathered in. I want, um, I want my viewers to really pay close attention from the five-minute mark and re-listen to from the five-minute mark on. It should make anybody, regardless of your views or what side, if any, that you find yourself on, should make every one of us shudder in unison. And if we do, maybe that would be the thing that we need to put us all together because that's our only weapon. But when comparing it to what you're, we're all witnessing today, at the 526 mark, your leftists in America, can you believe this? Le your leftists, that statement from 35 years ago in America, are a tool. And they will be used, they serve a purpose, until they no longer matter. At which point they will be kicked by, they will be abused by the same military boot. As a matter of fact, 
because let's out and out say it, if you do your history, uh, do study your history, you're going to find out that almost every revolution was started on the Democrat side because of their victim mentality. They always look at themselves as being the victims. And almost every single revolution has been started by the left. And again, I don't vote. I'm just doing research. I'm doing research, but that's not research from mainstream sources. It's alternative sources. And sorry, everything throughout history just points out that way. And I don't mean it as a good or a bad. I'm saying we all just need to learn by it. So going back and closing it off, it's uh, if there was one single short video that I could save in memory stick, show future generations about A, how I was aware about it, how I tried to notice notify everybody I can get my hands on to do my part and show your children or grandchildren what we've become when they're asking those questions what happened what have we become why are we why are we like this at least you'll be able to show them some documented information of how it came to be want to know something go back to world war 2 World War I, Revolution, Korean War, Vietnam, all the way through ancient wars, and it's all the same. Nothing changes. Technology. Okay, we'll move on forward. There's be about another two or three more short videos before we move on to enjoying the great outdoors. And sure, we'll talk about these things, but chances are I'll be with other people while we're doing it. Till next time, it's Olberian DR. Appreciate your all attention. I hope it helps. Bye.